Hello, it's LDO again, and I'm your friend YZC, and this is my friend GPM. Hell, oh. That stands for Girly Puny Man. Mm, puny. Now I got two games for you this week, and if you recall, my word two weeks ago was answer. So I went looking for words that, games that really sort of centralize the theme of answer. In this case, answering the phone. Was that a demo bit that started there? No. This is a, a game called Hello Hell O. Oh. It's an RPG maker horror game. Oh. oh, okay, cool. Basically, each game starts, you're in a small room with a load of stuff in it. You do basically one thing, and then usually that's, it usually just ends somehow. And this, and you just play the game over and over and over again until you figure out what it's about. It's Interesting. Up, it's that's art. A- that's a bolder uh, cons and 18 approaching footsteps. Well, yeah, you didn't hear it very well, but if you blow the candles out, you hear footsteps. So all we know at this point is that we're this dude in a room. Was that letter there the first time? No, it wasn't. All right, so there are, there are more. It does change and grow. Like yes, it. it does come to an actual conclusion. All right. Um, so um, <clears throat> yeah, the it's phone. usually based around the phone. So and that bottle did a creepy thing there. You're supposed to be scared. Woo! <coughs> what's your what's your interpretation so far? Um, well, I'm, I'm I'm interested in the idea that the start screen is integrated into the overall gameplay. Okay. Like the way you know, I thought that you'd started that like a demo play had started and you'd pushed start and got it back to the title screen. When that demo play was actually you know you playing the game and the start screen was this cycling is an interesting sort of aspect of it. I don't know if it scares me though. Like, do you think there's a issue with graphics in? Well, there's quite a few RPG Maker horror games because it tends to be a, a circle people go to if they have an idea to create horror, but they're not very good with the technicals of video games. Which is an easy thing. So there's yeah. this, there's Ao Oni, one I told you about a while back. There's a couple of others games like games like Witch House, Eeb, Mad Father. They're pretty YouTube foddery, so you can probably find videos for them all. Mm. This is a very very short one. It's just basically a centralizing a single horror concept of mm. being trapped and unable to move on until you've answered the phone. Do you think it works, though, in terms of, like, does it scare? Do you, did, it, did it unnerve you? Did it upset you? Do you think that... Um, because I mean, the, the question I have is, I played a... What's that kind of, like, 2D Silent Hill that you've got as well? Oh, Lone Survivor. Yeah, Lone Survivor. Because I, I, I played that, and it's, it's you know, it's a solid enough game. It's just, it's, I'm not scared. I'd say I find this intriguing. If it scares mm. me, it's just because it has the occasional jump scare, which is very disappointing. I mean, is a jump scare in, like, RPG Maker gonna... Well, well, like that bottle falling wasn't exactly a. Well, it won't be that effective because I've had to turn the sound down, haven't I? Yeah, yeah I suppose a loud. And I was sound listening and... to it with the, on full volume, and it was a bit startling. Yeah. But yeah, suppose... jump scares are always cheap. I prefer to avoid it. Yeah. It's worth remembering. Silent Hill Two doesn't have any. Well, it has one, and uh, you have to go looking for it. This is me. Yeah, as I was saying, this is my this is my first experience playing the game. It's pre-recorded video. And uh, I had the presence of mind to record my first experience. Mm. So I don't know what's going on, the me playing the game. The me talking now understands what's going on, because I've played the game through. Incredible future, Yahtzee. Oh, something appeared behind me, scary. Oh, huh. See, again... (sighs) See, I'll tell you what this game reminds me of. is a piece of interactive fiction I want. Oh, it's a different carpet, isn't it? I wasn't sure. Yes. Well, there's a piece of interactive fiction I played a while back called Isle, and it's set in a supermarket, and it's over after you enter a single command. But uh, there's a huge library of different commands you can enter, hmm. and each one sort of recontextualizes the situation and like uh, fills in the story of who you are. Like, you could be like a grieving widower thinking of his the last his last holiday in Italy with his wife. You could your wife might actually be there. It all depends on the single thing you do. That's interesting. I mean, the first instinct, obviously, for most people is to do something silly. And if you do something silly, it creates a story about someone who's cracking up after the death of his wife. Hmm. And that sort of reminds me of this game, because it's the same sort of thing. You do one thing, and then the game's sort of over. Except that the game changes each time you yeah, play it. Resets and recontextualizes. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm, I, I'm trying to think about things that have scared me. And I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm a visual person, but a lot of it does come down to... Sight. I mean, I'm trying to think of a book that scared me, and I'm kind of struggling. Although I don't know, maybe I haven't read the right horror books. I mean, has a book scared you? Like, I'm I'm trying to 
sort of approach this and like it just looks like an RPG mega game to me. So I'm just, right. you know, I mean, probably if I had the headphones on, if I was getting some, I know, you know, that goes back to the, the usefulness of sound in scaring, I'd probably be picking up more from it. But just at the moment, it's just like, you know. Let me just risk turning the volume up a bit more. A little super deformed kid wandering around. Did I'm just trying to, you know, I'm trying to, like, how's a book scared you? Uh, let me think. There have been books that grossed me out, like American Psycho. Yeah, that's very that's, different, That kind like... left me disturbed. I wouldn't say it scared me. I mean, um... No, you... I can't really think of any. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, YouTube comment people recommend me some decent scary books. I'll, I'll fucking read them. I'm coming up on like three months break. I'll have a look. Well, I've read a, a, a bit of Stephen King, and he's supposed to be the grand master of this area, but I, f I just find him rather annoying. I find all of Stephen King's non-horror books the good ones. Okay, like Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, or um, Stand By Me. Or no, well, what was... Both of which were short stories. Yeah. Yep, did it again. That, that crafty bottle. That's... Uh, getting drunk tonight. Keeps putting it on the edge of the table. That's, you know... Did you see that table move? Um, no. Well, that table in the bottom left moved. Oh, see, I, I kind of thought I saw yeah, something like that, yeah. but it, did you see it? It moved again. No, because I'm I'm following the little character. That's the problem. Like I was looking at what yeah. they were doing. Oh well, okay. Well, that takes you by surprise. Mm. And the doll's head fell off. Are you at least intrigued? At all? Oh, yeah, like, I'm engaged, I'm intrigued. Um, the, you know, it's interesting. Hmm. The line I'm trying to work out how I can cross, whether it's something within me, whether it's maybe a fault of the construction of the game, don't, is how do I let this scare me? I like how the letter said, don't leave the room. <laughs> or the... Sort of um, Silent Hill 4, really. Hmm. I think the game, like, would be better if it's... Uh, uh, if it played a bit more with the phone thing. Because every time you use the phone, a bit more of the text is added. Mm. I like that for creating a sense of encroaching darkness. Um, like, I mean, there's a jump scare for you. See, one of the... Um, sorry if I totally ruined the effect by gabbling all over it. Just, yeah, just left the room. Not having any of that. Fling the phone. What happens if you say, oh, see you was quit? Yeah, see you was quit. Well, oh, there it goes again. See, I mean, so at this point, I'm sort of thinking I don't really want to answer the phone because that's answering the phone seems, seems to bring me closer to whatever this thing is each time. Do you think there's a? Do you think there's a win scenario that you can like be steering to water away from in this though? Because that's not what I'd be thinking. Yeah, I'd... there is. Oh, uh, you'll. I play through the whole game in the in the like half an hour. You'll see that there is a there is a win scenario. Oh, okay. It's kind of hard to find, though. Well, see, that's the thing. Playing this, I'd be just touching everything and doing everything because I figure it's just what's expected of me. Like, I'm not... Yeah. Think I wouldn't be engaging in this thinking, okay, don't touch that because it might kill me. Like, there's no game in my mind to this. You know what I mean? Well, no, there's no game. Well, that's... Okay, this book is opened, and we're, uh, we're finding out that it's written by our girlfriend. Um, oh. Remember that TV bulletin earlier was talking about how a young lady was killed in a car accident? I bet those are completely unrelated. You're just making connections where there are none, Yancy. Yeah, yes. That bit of news was about our mum. Yeah, that's completely... Yes, we're being haunted by our mum. Our girlfriend is outside with a big box of Easter eggs for us. Yeah, and some mum ghost repellent. Because every girl needs that. I want to know what this guy's doing when he leaves the room. Is he, like, going to work? Is he going down the subway? Oh, carpet's changed again. That's what he's doing, he's buying a new carpet. Well, yeah, with all the teddy blood. If anything, this has even more blood on it than the previous carpet. Ah, <laughs> uh, did it again. Fell for that old TV trick. I think it's... Like, does it balance out the jump scare moments a little bit? Because I think they're really... Alright, see. Well, you can't... They're certainly unexpected, I'll give it that. Well, yeah, but they're happening fairly frequently at this point. What do you want to do to me, Akari? Here's a letter to explain. Oh, goody. Now that's ominous. Yeah. This reminds me of, um... Have you read those, uh... That Korean webcomic that, uh... 
about the woman who lost her baby. And, like, when you scroll down far enough, it, like, grabs the scroll bar and shoots down by yourself. Oh, uh, oh yeah, that freaked me out. Yeah, that actually gave me the Honest to Christ shits. It's because uh, it's playing with expectations of how a website works. Yeah, and you don't see it coming. Oh, someone's knocking at the door. And because I'm incredibly smart, I'm going to open it. Hey, honey. Now, honey, I know you're mad. Now, this is where, like, things get a bit more story-esque. Okay. Here's a blue lady. So we can tell her off for being blue. We can say we're, how much we love her new look. Or we can completely blow her off. Just blank her and start staring at the room. Did you she... scold her? Yeah, I'm scolding her ass. Yahtzee Croshaw scolds ghosts. Oh, and, now you've, <laughs> and now you've chopped my head off. Poor communicator. You silly ghost. <laughs> Uh, Why like you're just like life. you're turning into your mother, you know. <laughs> Sound just like a. There okay. goes my head. The future reference: don't scold the evil ghost. <laughs> yeah. uh, doors knocking again. Fuck it, going to bed. She can stay out there all night. So you can go to bed as an end situation. Yeah. Just let it be morning. What are the end situations? Like, do you well, know what they are? Are they regular? You'll, you will see. Well, yeah, but if you walk to the bed every time, will it? Now, uh, like, there'll still be someone outside the door, and tables will continue Douche. to move. Pussy! Wack, 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 wack. Chicken pussy. It's the worst kind. Pussy, cat, chicken, thing. It's Yahtzee's word wheel. I would dress like a fucking little Lord Fauntleroy, I just noticed. <laughs> when I was playing this, the resolution was a lot smaller. Ah, uh, here she comes again. Yeah. Here she comes, here she comes, here she comes again. Oh, here she comes again. I don't wanna I don't wanna touch you really. Just Okay, I think this time I'm gonna try giving her a lovely hug. See that oh, would no, been... no I'm not I'm gonna check the room. That would have been my first instinct. And he's gonna knock my head off again. I could actually have moved at that point. I just I just uh did froze up. <laughs> I wonder what's going to happen. Yeah, I Yeesh. froze up because I was so terrified <clears throat> of the blue sprite. The terror. Yeah, see, that's... I don't think a game can scare me, really, without a certain... Because, again, I think this may be personal because it's me, but without a, an effective visual element. Well... You know, like, I think there needs to be a, a, an If ability. a game can plant an idea in your head... Yeah, I just... Well, this is what I'm asking, is I'm, I want to find a game that maybe has graphics like this that can do that. I mean, maybe it's because I'm watching it. If I was into, you know, if I had that kind of point of interaction, I yes, might be able yes, to, yes. Uh, if you had, maybe if you were just watching this with the headphones on and stuff, uh, give it a try. Maybe poke about. There we go. I'm gonna make friends with the uh, lady with the three holes in her face. <laughs> I can think of a use for those. Come to me, whole face. It's your pet name. What? Oh. Turns out we get around this ghost the same way John Constantine did in Neil Gaiman's Hold Me short story. <laughs> Every woman just needs cuddles. There we go. It's an analogy for relationships. <laughs> if she's going to cut your head off, show her a bit of affection. Jesus Christ. Just, just hug. Cuddles. Oh, but we are dead now. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's... So I couldn't do anything but quit the game at this point. It won't let me do any more. Hmm. But then, oh, then I figured, oh, that's the end of the story. But then I thought, well, I better, you know, play it again. And then this happened. Play it again to double check stuff, and suddenly the writing's backwards. After I started the game a second time, and now we're the girl, and the house is the other way around. That's commendable. See, that's. Now it's a man who was hit, killed in a car accident. Hmm. See, I like shit like that. You go back, you quit the game, you think, because yeah, your brain ends the game there, and then it's like, nope, the game is still going, even when it's not being played. I remember when I was first messing around with the Venture Game Studio, I found a command in the uh, help file for opening the CD tray. And the help file said, you're probably not going to find much of a use for this. And I said, ooh, I beg to differ. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, oh, I disagree. Well, it would be completely lost on any computer that didn't have a CD tray, but it would sp you could use it to spook the fuck out of someone who did have one. That'd, that'd honestly have given me the willies. Like, if you know, oh, I'm going to fuck with your thing, or, you know, just 
Yeah, like yeah a, psycho- a game like this where stuff's moving around and your thing just opens. Like the Psycho Mantis thing. Yeah. But I mean, like, don't telegraph it. Ooh, ooh. Okay. <laughs> That'll learn, yeah. <laughs> I love how with the girl, it's like months of sort of tormenting you and shit. Dude goes just like, Burr, head off, fuck you, yeah. Well, yeah, because it's kind of gone back to the dude now and I'm not sure why. This is it. I, I'm enjoying this game. Like, I don't know if it's scary, but it's fucking interesting. <laughs> just, I wasn't what, sure. That, man goes, just cut your head off. There's no fucking around. I said the fireplace connects to the mirror world. I'm not sure what that meant, because as you can see, there doesn't seem to be any connection to the mirror world there. We lit it with our little Lord Fauntleroy powers. Hello, Mummy. Mummy. Just got, can, probably just got the invisible butler to do it. Can you get me my phone, Mummy? James, could you answer that? Yes, sir. Who is calling? <laughs> your oh. deceased girlfriend, sir. No dash at all, James. Put your head back on. <laughs> yep, this is basically the same as uh, the first few answerings of the phone. First time I played. Do you go back to the girl? Like, Eventually, or... yes. Okay. You have to jump through some hoops, though. See, now I suddenly jumped to the end of this guy's story. That's interesting. Hmm. I mean, I, I think this is an example of some real fun you can have with narrative and yes, like yes, things that video games can do that like regular narratives really struggle to. Yes. Especially the whole quit the game and start again. Mm-hmm. Um, the first game to do something like that, which blew my fucking mind that I that I can think of off the top of my head, was um, one of the X Men games for Mega Drive. Yes, yeah, so we have to reset the reset Mega Drive. Cerebro, and you had to reach out and push reset. Really wasn't intuitive, though. No, it was fucking not. That was insane. I remember, but... the, I remember playing a game on the Commodore 64, Creatures 2, where the cheat was just was to uh, wet your finger and rub it across a joystick port. That is... I wish things like that still worked. I wish you could make that a cheat for a game. That's amazing. How did the heck... <laughs> That's mm. fucking great! It's fun to play around with the uh, fripperies of the format, I suppose. Well, yeah, that's. I mean, it was sort of. I was watching that, a lot that, of... That's almost entirely unique. I cannot think of another game that's done anything like that. Well, I was binge watching Monty Python clips this morning, and it occurred to me that Monty Python uh, does an awful lot of subversive pretending the show's finished when it hasn't, mm. and then, like, doing fake BBC announcements. I, yeah, I do love the fake lemon curry. And that's sort of the similar sort of thing, sort of subverting the limitations of your medium. Um, what's his name? Sean McAuliffe did great shit with that when he was on SBS, where he'd have fake ads yeah. for, like, SBS programs that you'd th- that could almost be real. One yeah. of my, my favorite was just he'd do, like, fake Bunnings ads for just bizarre products, like assorted loose gray hair, three ninety nine. dollars oh. Pete Smith masks, $4 each. Here she is again. I think, um, I'm not sure Popper in the understand. face. Just right hook. <laughs> Uh, I think it's the first roughly 30 minutes of the video. Run. It's going through to the actual story end of Hello, Hell, Oh. She's looking a bit frumpy. (laughs) Can't go to bed. Ectoplasm packs on the pounds. You wait there, love. I'll just pour us a bottle of wine. Can you leave? I'm not sure what you're going to do. But you can go to the phone, and then this happens. He seems to be calling Akari. You don't have a future. You're dead. This is why I kind of—I really like things like RPG Maker and shit like that, just for you know, experimental. Oh, head fell off. Fucking god damn it! <sighs> but that was actually like a setup for the continuing lead up to the final story end. Okay. See, if we'd called our girlfriend, but our girlfriend is a ghost, who could we be talking to? Ooh. And yes, now we're the lady again, and the phone's ringing. All right, frumpopotamus, let's get some uh, get some narrative going. And this is the dialogue that the dude was saying in the last play. Hmm. And uh, she doesn't know what the fuck he's on about. (laughs) 
and she was startled by a sound effect. So the ghost's head fell off. Something's head fell off, yes. Uh, Trixie. Trixie And now we're moving forward in the the mirror world. Hmm, Okay, cool. This is novel. I enjoy this. I should poke around like some of the... um... Yeah. um, I mean, yeah, of course. Like 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 I said, they tend to be YouTube foddery. The RPG maker horror. What do you mean, like YouTube foddery? Like, what, what, well, what's that as a judgment? I'm not, I, I don't well, know. Well, you know, something like, oh, only a lot of people play it and then scream too much. Mm. Because it does rely on very sudden scares and a very weird looking monster. So people do the whole scare cam thing. How is that still a thing? 13 year olds on the internet. It's almost, you know, mandatory now, even if you're not doing scary games. I'm not sure why. I could think of us. nothing. Uh, I could think of nothing more distracting than how Gabriel's horrible froggy face yeah. in the corner of the screen, or Yahtzee's you know rimmerish glare just penetrating into you. Uh, yes, that face of the man who looks increasingly like Stephen Merchant the more he ages. You are like a fusion of Chris Barry and Stephen Merchant, if you say so. It's. I don't know, like, I don't see the merch. I see the merchantiness in the eyes, definitely, but not, like, like the kind of the brow, yeah. And the height, obviously. And the hair, I'd say. Intensely tall. That's a good lineage, though. If you say so. Uh Funny guy. Huh. Someone's getting cross. What would you do as a ghost? Um. I'd go woo. What would you do as a ghost? What a uh, strange question. Well, I mean, what, I mean, when we say as a ghost, what in this internal mythos are we saying a ghost is capable of? Um, I mean, yeah, I suppose. Are, I mean, are, are just, you only here because you were hit by a car and you're annoyed about that? Or are we just invisible and walking the earth? The a mindless essence of emotion, fluttering about, yelling at people. Well, this is one of the things I always like about people who say that spirits are still around, but it's like, in what form? Like, am I just... Is, is they it like, certainly are still around on the top of my kitchen cupboard. Hey, hey look at you. Like yeah, I've, still got, Morgan I've still got most of a bottle of Captain Morgan. You should start belting that right now. No. Just take a good afternoon swig. I Back just, when I was drinking, Saturday morning drunk was like some of my favorite. Oh, hey, the dollies are getting so frisky. Uh, just like in Poltergeist. Ostensibly a dolly. Yeah, just bash that chair out of the way. <laughs> out of the way! Be gone from my sight, armchair. Just whack him out of the way with my massive bosoms. Whoop! arms. <laughs> what a fucking drama queen that dolly is. Yeah, stay in the house! Stay in the house! All the um, self-harm in the world won't make me pay attention to don't you. Don't make me cut my own head off. I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Its head is off. And the phone's ringing. That's a tablet. It's a... It's a fucking massive phone, isn't <laughs> it? It's the size of our head. Oh, my fucking tablet's ringing. <clears throat> kind of like the end gauge. And side talking. So it's Kazuki and Dakari. Did you ever know a person who actually had the N-Gage? No, but I did assist in the development of a game for it once. Ah, someone that's con- an interesting story, I didn't know that. Well, you know, someone contracted me to design a, like, a little mini game for it. Yeah. I thought, fuck it, it's an easy contract, bit of cash. Yeah. I... St- Still not sure if anyone actually played it in the world. <laughs> it's just there'll be one emulation enthusiast who has it. Possibly. There's, uh, trust me, there's, there's people like that. Oh no, the book opened. Horror. Oh no, the bottle broke. Horror. And the wine. The the chair has kind of placed itself conveniently for reading. So we're just uh, keeping the journal of our dead boyfriend or girlfriend around. It's creepy. Couldn't be bothered reading it at any point up to this. Well, it, it wasn't open. You had to wait for the ghost to open it, obviously. Oh, of just... course, because we have no hands. No. We can only either bash stuff out of the way with our tits, or wait for the ghost to take the initiative. And poor nubs. I've only got nubs. I wonder how much of this was uh, default art included with RPG Maker. 
the little Lord Fauntleroy thing makes me think that at least a chunk of it was. Yeah. I wonder if the, all the writing in the diary was mirrored as well. Hmm. Jump scare. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Boyfriend face. I get it. This Stop it. With the three holes. Yeah. But what the hell is a woman supposed to do with three holes in a man's face? Uh, scissors. Store her potpourri in them? <laughs> Women, am I right? <laughs> Ladies and your fragrances. Oh, there we go. Now we're get, getting to the last moments of the mirror. Does he just not. completely not knock, storm the house, and cut your head off again? Because that was fucking hilarious. No, I'm not sure what I did that caused that to happen. You were a woman, Yahtzee. I think it might happen if you ignore the phone for too long, but I'm not sure. I never <laughs> tried that out. Answer the phone or I'll cut your head off. What don't you understand? If Remember, if you're, if you're afraid that a loved one is going to cut your head off if you answer the phone, there are people you can call. And if you are afraid that you're going to cut the head off a loved one, there's also people you can call. Yep, there we go. Same arrangement as last time. We let them in because we're a spaz. <laughs> Who is it? Ghost. Oh, but uh, because we're a in. girl, we don't have as much agency as the boy does. <laughs> well, of course she hugged him and it just all went horribly. All the guy pansied out. He's just he's desperately lonely. I don't know. And it's been a, my experience that guys are worse at breakups than girls. And Kazuki's voice is coming from somewhere. Now we're being very, very slowly chased around. It's like Bubba Hotep in this shit. <laughs> um, um, um. Yeah, just, just check your fixtures and fittings while the ghost offers yeah. about. Oh, hey, hang on. Hold uh, on, honey. I'm going to take, take, take a photo of you and put it on Instagram. That ghost has the... Hmm, remember what we were saying about the fireplace being the gateway to the mirror world? Yeah. So I think that's going to set up this return to the normal world, in which we will finally conclude this bloody game. <laughs> Thrilling! Yes, fireplace gets the mirror world. Does it, I thought. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Liar. No mirror world. Why would there be a mirror world in the fireplace? It I'm takes just to the gonna, fire world. Just gonna talk to my ghost girlfriend. Hello. Yes. Hello. A freezer that connects me to the mirror world. A shower curtain that connects me to the mirror world. A mirror that oh that doesn't do anything. That doesn't that's, do anything. That's just a yes. <laughs> Shut up. You don't know anything about mirror worlds. Yeah. Basically, I was sick of it. I'm going to work <laughs> at the mirror factory. Fuck it. I'm done. And it skips straight to the end again. <clears throat> hey, the cleaner hasn't been. Well, they have, and they got drunk. Invited some of their friends over. I'm gonna have, leave a very strongly worded passive-aggressive note for next time. <laughs> I figured the fireplace has got to mean something at this point, but no. Douche. No. Hey. Hold your horses, I can't see your face yet, I haven't opened the door. <laughs> see when you close your eyes. And in the faces of dead children. And this is an, uh, the encounter with Smurfette again. <laughs> yeah, th at this point I've figured it out. Yeah. Yeah, that scream is the other girl in the mirror world, and now we're going to talk to her and say, grab your hand, and it's going to tie... Well, everything's going to tie together. I'm kind of stuck on the fireplace being the portal to the mirror realm and not like the mirror. Well, there isn't a mirror. Yeah, probably could have been. Maybe it would have been too much programming work. And, and here is... Art I drew myself. Here is someone who learned how to draw manga style from animes because they don't realise that the mouth in the side of the face thing is an animation technique. And just awful. It means they don't have to make the jaw go up and down to animate talking. It's a. Uh... Well, now everyone's with Cork their. sex, yeah! Everyone's with their ideal partner. Happy ending. <laughs> and that is the actual story end. You have to, like, play through the game three times. And now we can all have a sort of existential crisis. What if it's like Bizarro Akari, who hates all the things that I like and stuff like that? Well, opposites attract. Well, they seem to be getting on alright anyway. 
It's going to knock that, off a teddy bear's head together. I think those hard speech balloons kind of lower the tone of the whole thing at, right at the end there. They really do. That just, <laughs> that just kind of made it a bit silly then. I don't think the happy ending fit it. Well, I guess not. Yeah, it I don't know. I think it kind of undoes an awful lot of the decent e effort that went to with the structuring the narrative. I don't know. That was nice enough. I wouldn't call it scary. Yeah, it was just a fun little storytelling experience. Yeah, playing yeah. with... Um, as a, what a lot of these RPG Maker horror games seem to do is sort of play with the uh, RPG Maker style. And that's the... Yeah, do something with you. Oh. Is that the ghost saying that? Yeah. The, 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 the ghosts that hate heads. What a level-headed ghost. Right, next game. Jesus fuck. Immediate jump to the next game. Okay, be sure to save your favourite images to the gallery. What's that about? Now... I said I had two games, and I was pretty sure you wouldn't have heard of either of them. The second one's called Dread Out. Ring any bells? Uh, I may have read the words together at some point. It's a rare beast, this one. It's an Indonesian horror game. Oh. It's... Hey, alright. Props to Indonesia for making some shit. Well, you haven't seen it yet. Oh, yeah, but still. It's Gameplay-wise, it's modelled somewhat on the Project Zero series, also known as Fatal Frame in, in America, where you take pictures of ghosts and I they die. I haven't played any of those. In this game, you take pictures with your camera phone. Say, phone, answer, it works. No, 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 no. And we are a schoolgirl, of course. Of course we are. And what you haven't seen is me cutting out like half an hour of really, really boring setup before before we got to this point of the game. Now I don't know what's happening. Basically, we our teacher, who's the girl in the glasses, drove all us drove us now like four schoolmates in a in a minivan to a field trip or something. Van broke down next to a scary deserted village. We came to this school. Now someone's gone missing. Hmm. Oh crap! Doki. Uh, that's 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 all you need to know, really. So fairly, if, fairly solid trope to start off with. So they're going to run back in and offer more opportunities to uh, be separated. <laughs> That's all split up and not keep an eye on each other. Yes. And one of these characters is our best friend. Possible lesbian awakening plot. Uh, really possible lesbian awakening plot or just... Okay. Uh, I, I, it's I'm kind of sure a long, really. longing stare there. Yeah, yeah. People have these names in Indonesia, apparently. It's a common thing for other people to use different languages to name each other. Yes. That particular long black-haired girl is the class suck-up. That, from what I gathered. I can't remember what his personality was. I think he's just one of the boys. <laughs> Steve Dave McBoyton. He's gonna probably die. Ooh. I know it's trying to be creepy, but uh, something about the graphics makes me kind of yeah, like, laugh. It, it looks like a like something developed in Unity, like an indie game. Yeah, the animations are a bit slidey. Like when the kid ran inside, it's just like a running animation, yeah. then dragged across like the sort of scene. I'm not sure this would have been a, a mocap game. I'm not yeah, sure if yeah. they have any mocap studios in Indonesia, or is that a very patronizing thought to have? Um. Uh, uh. Bam, you're alone. What now, bitch? Well, obviously, I'm going to get my camera phone out. That's a fucking bright light on that camera phone. They're pretty bright these days. My phone's got a fairly fucking whopping light on it. I like how it says don't be afraid to open doors in a game that's supposed to make you afraid of doors. Yeah, that's a weird, that's a weird bit of uh, advice there. What would you think of a game that like deliberately gave you shitty advice? What, like, like whether, uh, you know, Final Fantasy VII? <laughs> but no, where, like... The tutorial was fucking with you. Uh, would that be fucking with you in, as in giving you precisely the wrong buttons? Uh, not to that degree, I don't think, but like, you know, the tutorial starts out like a regular tutorial, but then it just sort of persists throughout the game, and at first you're kind of thinking, this is weird, where there's another tutorial going, but then it starts, you realise that it's actually starting to monkey with you. Sort of almost like an unreliable narrator, but... I did that in Poacher! Like did the, you? like the, um, the game's narrator that says things like, you found... A new weapon, you found a health upgrade. At the end of the game, it turns out all the time he's been some kind of mad demonic god who you must fight to get the true ending of the game. Oh, death. Well, not really death. Well, in uh, the game, no, that was how you described him to me when you were. In the game, he's the judge of all the earth. That's right, judge of all the earth. 
That was a hard boss fight. It was supposed to be. <clears throat> I'm glad. I'm glad you could say that, because that was the idea. Mm. And here is some of Indonesian's moonspeak. <laughs> here we see an again a popular this... Indonesian mall during opening hours. Yes. <laughs> This, yeah, this is third world bits. This uh, is uh. this is rush hour in Indonesia, <laughs> and it's dark because they got the special Indonesian sun out, uh. which is sort of the opposite of our normal sun and actually makes things darker. I haven't played any of these like camera games. Are any of them good? Um, uh, yeah, Project Zero is not bad. Bit jump scary. Don't um, be afraid to open the doors that we don't let you open. So, Thanks. Well, some of them open. I guess oh, they're saying that to book in case you get jaded by all the locked doors. How do you suppose games should go about doing that? Like in like, I mean, I think Silent Hill has loads of locked doors, but I think that yeah. plays into but the they, nature yeah. of it. Yeah, but, and it, and it has the code. Yeah. So I'm just kind of curious, like you know, has the uh, looks like the lock is broken. Never going to open. Yeah. It's locked. Going to open it later. So you know not to waste your time with all the broken doors. Yeah, and the broken doors generally look like background. And, you know, I guess it's fine in a game like that to have it only obvious that it's locked by using it, because it's very, it's like survival horror generally, is a very exploration and discovery focused mm. gameplay model. So, um, it's, and players are going to be like pressing use on everything anyway. Yeah, that's a point. Wander around, tap X. Uh, yeah, that's my attitude for this game. See, this, this weirded me out. This one t blackboard texture doesn't seem to be affected by light. As in, it's still fully illuminated even when you're not pointing your torch at it. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> I, was like, I, was just... I thought, is th am I supposed to be noticing this? Because it's just kind of nonsense. See? I don't They, they used the special glow-in-the-dark chalk on that one. I mean, that might be like three ips. I don't know what that means. So... Indonesian viewers, chime in, I'm curious. Uh, do we even have any Indonesian viewers? Now now we'll find out. I suppose so. I mean, come on. We've just been ragging on Indonesia. I guarantee you we'll find out. Hey, uh, we found a thing. Oh, where? What? We found... Oh. We found <laughs> that. It's a dead pig. A giant dead pig. He was the mall's mascot. Oh, shit, it's alive. That was giant dead pig mall. It's a very popular place in uh, Indonesia. And now... Can you not run? Well, I was wondering what I was supposed to do. There we yeah. go. That's yes. There is a giant pig roaming the halls now. That's because Indonesia. That's Apparently, I did do some research. Yeah. Apparently, the monsters in this game are from Indonesian folklore. So there you go. Something to do with pigs. Wars are scary. Yeah, I mean, if you ever watched Hannibal, yeah. well, the characters got the boars that eat people. They, they're pretty gross. Well, and it wouldn't be a survival horror if you didn't check every single toilet cubicle now, would it? Does this game even really have, like, items? Yeah, sort of. Because it doesn't, I'm I don't not know, the sure. game doesn't make me feel like I'm going to be picking up the red, the, you know, the umbrella crescent. Or... Oh, well, there might, uh, there might be some of that. I didn't play much of it, obviously. Okay. But you, you don't, certainly don't seem to pick up any weapons. You've so, got your phone. Where'd you get this game? Like, was this... It was on Steam. Oh, I right. basically did a search for phone as a tag, and this came up. So yeah. I checked it out and thought, this is a weird-ass game. Why is there a giant pig trying <laughs> to eat us, apropos of nothing? I thought it worth discussing. Hmm. Well, well, until... What was the giant pig in Indonesian folklore? Like? I didn't really commit that to memory. Oh, okay. Thought he might have a name and a purpose. His name's Bob. Anyway, we're going to be checking toilets for a bit, so how about that trailer for Hatred, then? We watched it before recording, and you hadn't seen it before. No. So, so and, I, and I told you to hold off on your opinion, so well, what is your view on the upcoming game Hatred, Gabriel? <laughs> Here's a pick. Um, I love it because that's how people who go on rampages see themselves as opposed to what they kind of actually look like. I think it's uh, <laughs> it's like yeah, because you, you you could find what they look like. As... It's it's a rather hideous piece of dialogue in that trailer. Uh, well, then, yeah. I hate everyone, uh, and now it's time for my revenge. Uh, I was written by a hack in five minutes. 
I have emotions. That pig looks kind of sheepish, ironically. <laughs> he really just wants to be friends. Oh, we're dead. He knocked you over by accident. Oh, I'm sorry. Friend. I think hatred, if it does come out, which looks to looks to be uh, basically a uh, random shooting simulator. Well, that's the thing. It's just it's just games that already see. This is the thing. I think I see it as more an evolution of what people do in you know sort of open world games. Or, it seems you know, to you... be a hardcore spiritual successor to the first postal, postal game, yeah. sort of isometric, just kill all the innocent people for no reason game. Yeah. And I think this will be the test of how far we've come. Let's see what kind of controversy will arise from that game. Well, again, who fucking cares? Because we've been able to do this since Postal. Yeah. Like, there's nothing new. But will it escape without comment from the uh, moral majority? Oh, Lord, no. Because those people are bored and have nothing to do. Scream I... and shriek about how that's going to influence people. I think the best possible reaction to the game would be for everyone to just go, yeah, it looks kind of dumb, really. Yeah. That will show we've... we've we are now mature. But that's the problem. There are people whose you know livelihoods are built on you know getting clicks off of complaining about shit like this. Well, quite. I don't know. It might be fun. I mean, uh, certainly seems a bit cathartic. Well, yeah, we all do this in every other game that lets you do this. Except this game seems to uh, glorify it to a certain extent. The way it in the trailer, the way you sort of like put your gun in the lady's mouth in a very sort of suggestive kind of way. I get, I, I'd be surprised if that's a woman's specific execution. I'm willing to I bet that you have the I gun. wouldn't be surprised if it was. Yeah, I mean, it could go either way. I reckon it's just a generic, like, you just put the gun in the mouth and pull the trigger. Something tells me the developers might actually be trying to deliberately get a moral panic going. That sells games. Yeah. I mean, you know, people are going to be going, oh, look at this, look oh, at this. Oh, hey, there's that pig again. Oh, leave me alone, Porkins. Ooh, a basket. Now... Fucking Jesus. Yeah, he's an ass. Alright. Well, well, I found out where our other students went. They're now fucking dead. Now, considering this game is seems to be taking a lot of cues from uh, Project Zero, I'm surprised it took me so long to figure out that I should try photographing the pig. <laughs> but rest assured, I get there in the end, if anyone else was screaming at their screens. I, I have never played one of the camera games, so I just... Uh, in no room to critique. Well, it's very reminiscent of this. Um, I just find it kind of interesting, like... You know, where have the other students gone? Oh, look, a giant boar. We're like, oh, well, they've been fucking murdered. Like, that's well, not a ghost. That's just a thing. Well, they probably haven't been murdered. They'll probably show up in the plot later. Well, yeah. They but wouldn't I'm have just, been set up so much if they didn't. I'm just saying, like, from, you know, from, from an outsider's perspective, I mean, you can get giant fucking boars in Australia, and those things are lethal. If you get near them and they just go, I'm going to fucking kill you, they're goddamn dangerous. Okay. I guess you can in Indonesia as well. Probably. Yeah, there's probably some giant and people, running around. Enough that people have made up some folklore about how they're ghosts of a dead fat bloke or something. Uh, granddad's family had property out in King Arroy and shit, and you just see, like, what's that? That's a fucking boar we killed. I was like, Jesus. Well, it's yeah. the size of a bloody horse. Well, perhaps you should consider breeding them. Taking them to, like, the pig show. Ultra pigs. They like them big at the pig show. Yeah. Um, I don't that's, know, see, so like... also your mum. Because we watched... Yeah, oh, hey. she's a prize winner. A thing! I found a thing. I found a genglot. Yeah. Looks like a little grey alien mummy. Don't know what that does. Jengles. Um, see, here's the thing. Because we watched two trailers before we started this. Yes. One was for hatred, the other was called I Am Bread. Uh, you're, you are bread? <laughs> yes. Um... And here's, see, here's it's, the fucking yes, thing. Yes, this like, is the new game, upcoming game from Bossa, the developers of Surgeon Simulator. Yeah, you're and a slice of bread. It's a fun That's... little physics-looking game where you're a slice of bread controlled in much the way the characters in Mount Your Friends are controlled, by the looks of it. Yeah. You have to get around a room to somebody's plate and try to make yourself more delicious on the way. Is that what you were doing? I think so, yes. Because you were crawling through the... Like, the, the little guy in the trailer was crawling through the toilet at one point. I'm like, what's his goal here? Well, you also like, pick up, you know, jam and sweeties toilet and stuff jam. like that. Mm, well, delicious. not in the toilet. I'm <laughs> presuming that was something you were supposed to avoid. The it's toilet. Like, Brad, have you been in the toilet? Um, but, I mean, th th this is where we get to it. And it's like, people always try to coalesce something so vast into, like, single little bite sizes. So in a, in, a, in you know, in a day where I can see the trailers for Hatred and I Am Bread, 
people are just going to focus on hatred because it's their fucking, you know, their existing attitudes supported by one tiny little element of the you past. Know, you know, Gabriel, you might not be prepared to hear this, but when you say people, that includes you. Uh huh. So are you saying you are only going to focus on hatred? No. I'm like, I'm not going to think about hatred after this. Well, there you go. Perhaps you're wrong then. You know, I always think Dude, when you people know you you know that the, 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 like bullshit that you know, people fucking won't focus on hatred. Well, well, I always I always think when people say phrases like uh, "everyone thinks" or "people will," if it's, it's a fun little game to play, just sort of mentally replace that with "I" or "I will" because. There's sort of a solid theory behind it. When people talk about a nebulous everyman, they're obviously taking their own minds as a reference. Well, no, that's exactly the point. I'm not, because I'm not going to think about hatred. Well, you might. Well, I'm saying, unless someone goes, hey, Gabe, what do you think of this? I'd be like, ah, oh, that's fucking pointless. Well, then maybe everyone will say that then. Do you really think that's going to happen? I Because when, yeah. when I'm talking about people, I'm talking about people who are essentially going to behave in a way that I'm not going to behave in. Like, people are racist. There are racist people. I'm not racist, but there are racist people. Well, specifically so it's a way of dividing behaviors that I'm not going to engage in. All right, stop didacticizing. What I meant is, if you're going to say people, be more specific. What people will focus on hatred? Uh, well, I said people who want to use it as a means of confirming existing negative opinions. about. That is too things. many words. Think no, it five words. No. Think five words or less. No. Okay, then. Say old people, that'll do. <laughs> well, I was trying not to just go on fucking prejudices. Some old people are cool with games. Oh, fine, you'll just tar all the entire human race with the same brush, then. No. People, and then people who engage in the behavior. So anyone, that could be anybody. That could be people, people my age. People who engage in the behavior? Yeah, I'm discussing a behavior. All right. So people will, because they will. You know that people are going to do that. No, I don't. Don't tell me what I know. Oh, Jesus. I'm being willfully difficult. <laughs> uh, I'm just waiting for the pig to show up again. <laughs> well, he's downstairs. Porkins can't get upstairs. Well, bread looked jolly whimsical. I, you know, yeah, bread looked like a lot of fun. I watched Hatred and I was kind of in a bad mood just for a lot of reasons. And then you see bread, it's like, ah. But you know what? Hatred kind of looked jolly whimsical as well. <laughs> I mean, if you could mentally replace the main character Fucking of... what? Alright. I think there was a pig. <laughs> when do you take a photo of him? Because this has been going on for quite a while now. Oh, eventually I figure it out. I think, um... Oh, yeah, so this... I figured out that the Can't pig... Can't get me in here, bacon eyes. Yeah, the pig gets stuck indoors. Alright. Which kind of undermines any kind of horror he could have had. Look at him, he's boss-eyed. Uh, yeah. What a, what a silly pig. Now I figured it out. And look, his face is different on the camera. Oh, that's kind of cool. And that scares him off. Doesn't yeah. kill him, though. Well, you can't kill faced pig. Have Ghostopedia. You... Oh. So, yes, if you replaced the character, main character of hatred with a piece of bread, that would probably seem quite whimsical as well. Mm. I think it's the way the character takes everything he does so seriously. That yeah, that sort of like Rob, a... Rob Zombie-looking motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, it's just... Mm. The people who, like, argue over what is or isn't metal and take it, like, really ultra-seriously. Yeah. Or, like, gothic. Like, it could be, you know, a lot of subcultures do that. But back in, like, when I was young, we, me and a friend of mine, we used to tease the people who referred to themselves as hardcore gothic. And, like, we don't do the stuff that, like, the kinder goths do. And it's well, like, if uh, people, anyone who refers to themselves as hardcore anything probably yeah, deserves Yeah, that's usually a intent. fucking alarm bell. <laughs> it's like, uh, don't take yourself too seriously. I'm so angry. Ugh. Yeah. I mean, you can't be angry all the time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, dude, you know what the guy from Hatred needs to do? Play a game of bread. Yeah. It's, there needs to be a mode where you <laughs> play as the guy down. from Hatred playing bread. And you'll see him like, this is fucking stupid. It's just another see that, one of the things yeah. the sheep will use to distract him. Hey, look at him go. You can see that look on his face like he's trying so it's hard like, not to enjoy I, himself. I don't like this. I don't like this. Like, just picture a goth on the teacups ride at Disneyland <laughs> with his arms folded going, I'm not having fun. I'm not having Whee! And finally, oh, look at the little bread. He's on the fan. Yeah. How'd he get up there? Not enough bread. Fucking bread. In the hatred man's life. Yeah. Everyone, see, this is, you know, video games could have saved that man's life. Well, I think there's 
I think one should take the hatred trailer with a certain amount of uh, irony. Yeah. One, I mean, possible there's a bit of nudge winking going on. Oh, I don't think it's serious. Well, yeah, well, it's the kind of thing that makes you wonder. I mean, um, is, are, is, are the developers on the level? Or are they specifically sort of eye-rollingly targeting metalhead twats? Well, I mean, to, you know, it's not just thir- the metal, uh, 13-year-olds. 13-year-olds. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you know, I. You what? Well, I'm I'm trying to think of a sentence. I you know. But you managed to think of the word "I," all right? Probably because it's always close to the forefront of your mind. Uh-huh. I, me, myself. Uh huh. So, have you finished the rest of that sentence in your head yet? Uh huh. Guess not. Uh huh. Um, I made spaghetti and meatballs this week. Turned out really nice. What did you use for the meatballs? Uh, beef mince. So just beef mince? You didn't sort of... With breadcrumbs, parmesan cheese... Ah, that's a good, good addition. And garlic pepper. I found, um... Made the sauce with diced tomatoes, olive oil, and onion. Look at you cooking up a storm now. Yes, yeah, bit too much oil, though. Tasted a bit oily. I kind of like oiliness in oh. my food, but then I'm a fat cunt. Yes, you are. I keep saying I'm gonna like eat a little differently and try and trim down because I'm up to like 106 kilo now, and I just I just don't. Oh yeah, you're putting it on. I only just noticed looking at I, you. I eat whole chickens every they're looking, chance I get. You're looking a bit chubby. Mm. They'll be draining like bits of fat with your platelets as well. Uh, I got a jog. That's that's well. I, I just every bit of exercise I do is quite static and just plays into the bulk. If I insult you more, will that make you thinner? Um, yeah, that's exactly how it works. Okay, try it on girls. You're a cunt. Yeah. Now I'm going to go home and cry the fat away. You're a fat, sweating cunt. Jiggly puff. <laughs> and you're also very dumb. Jiggly So I'll say you're puff. dumb as well. That way you'll become smarter. This is how it works. Yeah. That's education. There's uh, the piggy. I only, only works if you photograph his head. Photographing his ass, not so much. What was that? Did somebody just shoot past you there? I didn't notice that when I was playing the game, but yeah, I did notice something. Come here, Porkins. You already used that one. Yeah, that's what I'm calling. That's my name for him now. Porkins. I'll call him, um, Does this do any? Like, are you killing him? Oh, okay. I don't know. I What's mean, the point? Like, where are you trying to go? Is he just, just like sort of hovering pestilence? At the moment, I guess I'm just still exploring, looking for the way forward. Hmm. This isn't very scary. Well, no. I mean, we've established the pig's fairly easy to get rid of. Yeah, and it's just. It, it's just a giant pig with a, and like the person face thing doesn't really kind of add maybe, to it. Maybe it's a cultural thing. Maybe it's like the uh, burping yeah. nurses from Silent Hill Four. It's scary to the Japanese because um, they got this whole thing about being rude and uncouth. I don't know the way they moved. Um, kind of gave me the willies. That kind of you know unnatural staggering gait that they had. I'm not sure we're talking about the same monster here. Oh, wait, which was Nurses from Silent Hill 2, didn't you say? No, I was talking about the patient nurses things from Silent Hill 4. Oh, okay, I haven't played who, Silent who Hill 4. quite infamously made burping noises when you hit them. I mean, they didn't even, like, sound edit it much. It was just really obviously a burp. Huh. And what was even funnier is that you'd fight them on a staircase, and then they'd, like, fall down the stairs, and with each step, they'd make the burping noise again. <laughs> it's kind of hard to, you know, yeah. <laughs> take it seriously at that point. <laughs> Like, imagine sort of stabbing, like, Jason Voorhees, and it's, like, finally over, and then he just cuts this long, relaxed fart. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> once they're dead, the body's at rest, just go. <laughs> I did not know that. I did not know they did that. That's funny. And I think it's because a Japanese cultural thing where yeah. um, they think it's very, you know, uh, forward and uncouth to do that sort of thing. The whole con- concept of... Um, of being polite is very central to their cultural mindset. Healthy Japs. Being, yes. Um, all right, well, we're running around on ten minutes left, so... Want to pick a question? Yeah, you can do it. It's your video. What? Yeah, it's oh. my video, so traditionally the other person picks. There's Piggy. Yeah. Still not dead. Not you sure. know, I gotta say, it really, yeah, like... Not sure if that battery meter's got anything to do with anything. Mm. Have any of you fired, or have either of you fired a gun in real life? Crowbars, 357. I I suspect someone's asking that because of the opinions we've passed on the subject of gun control in such videos as the Proteus video. 
in which we said, Americans are mad. Mm. And there was that one rather creepy message from someone saying, give me a Skype call in 20 minutes, I will change your mind on guns. That's just a fantastic thought. It's so just... have have you ever fired a gun, yes. Gabriel? Yes, yes. And so have I. Still yeah. in favour of gun control? <laughs> yes. Me too. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think you should have a right to have these things, but you have to understand that, particularly in the States, you have this weird problem that's very distinct to you. And it may have an issue, like, you know, there is a time when you should probably take the toys away. Well, you say that, but, you know, I've uh, heard some arguments. And the one that gun control nuts always seem to come back to is that there's a larger violent crime rate in England, which does have gun control, than in America. But when they say violent crime, yeah. I wonder if there's some fudging of the stats no, there, going on. There, there. are. I've, I've, I've read about that. England classifies different stuff as violent crime. Right. So that completely blows out those sort of proportions. Also, violent crime <coughs> not committed with a gun, I would argue <coughs> probably more survivable. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Um, uh, you know, a that many guns in a society is a tacit escalation of all the violence. Like if it if if two hills well, it's sort of, yeah I mean if you make if if you let it be understood that there is a necessity for guns it's an admission that uh, everyone has to protect themselves with lethal force everyone has to be able to say if we can't all be civil I'm going to start killing people <laughs> well then two bogans get in a fight in Australia it's a fight you know if if one of them has a you know if they if they have guns suddenly it's a fucking gunfight and someone's going to die well I don't want to let this get too didactic again. Yes, you know, specifically. A calendar or something. Specifically, I fired a. I just. Uh, uh, I always knew the word didactic, but recently I confirmed its meaning in my head. Yeah. I mean, I sort of already knew what it was, but uh, I was always kind of afraid to use it because I hadn't looked it up properly. Hey, it's a new ghost. That's actually kind of creepy looking. Yeah, and it was invisible with the camera down. And when you like take pictures from her close up, she sort of reacts. I think this is bad design here, because, um... Cause, yeah, she was she teleported behind me there. Oh, sneaky. Because it's sort of letting me think that it's doing damage to her when I take pictures, but I am not, I'm not actually doing damage to her. Yeah, it really, like, it looks like an attack hitting. Yes. Is she now she disappears, now? and... Yep, she's behind me again. Alright. Ow, my ears. You're just an annoying ghost. I don't like you. Yeah. This is the jump scare ghost, I suppose. If you didn't have your camera up... She would have just taken you by surprise because she's invisible in the real world. Yahtzee, why do you hate co-op games? It burns when I fee. Well, I haven't finished with the other question. Oh, okay, I was just well. going to say specifically I fired a gun at a gun range in uh, Seattle when I was invited over there by the Valve guys. And uh, one of them was a, a proud gun owner who said that he'd take me to the gun range as part of the quintessential American experience. And it was fun. In the same reason, you know, I found skydiving fun. It's fun to be close to danger. I just don't think you should base your life around it. Um, yeah, my granddad told me to shoot his rifle, and um, I've gone to a gun range and shotgun. Still not hurt, Ned. Oh, no, just over there. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you have to, like, get it behind you, and then you can keep going forward. Well, I figured it out eventually. Oh, okay. You'll <laughs> see. Quicker. You have to photograph her back. Ah. Oh. Horrible gash. All right, so why do you hate co-op games? Well, I don't think you do. Oh. Well, I, I, I tend to avoid co-op games because I don't really like playing with people, as we said. He like, specifically, people. That's the. I don't really like playing cooperative because I feel there's a lot of pressure. Uh, uh, I feel pressure on me there to be, you know, a, a good support character. I feel pressured to do good and to, to, like, to pull my weight. Whereas, just single player, I can just relax and play at my own pace. Like, whenever I play a game with you, like when we were playing Mario Bros. 3D Land, you just kept running ahead. Because <laughs> there was a competitive that, element. That annoyed me, because I'm a, I'm a very sort of methodical gamer. I like to explore the whole environment before I move on. Well, you know, there was a competitive element of that game, and we're trying to dick around and have fun. Like, I think you should... Fun? You know. <laughs> Who the hell plays video games to have fun? I don't know, man. I think it's this new fad the kids are doing. Video, I'm trying to get into it. You know, trying video to, it's games, a midlife crisis. Video games are for challenging yourself hideously and also pushing a social agenda, apparently. <laughs> Yahtzee's poof, definition. So, uh, you like co-op games? Um, no, well, I... Because I do like just spending time by myself. And video games were, like, a very sort of lone hobby. Like, it was just something, you know, 
back in the day you did a lot by yourself. Well, yes. Um, I do enjoy playing co-op games. I think when we played Alien vs. Predator, that was fun. Well, it was fun because we were sort of you know, around, riffing, yeah. riffing on the game. Well, that's, you know. It's traditionally fun to play or watch something bad if you've yeah. got a friend around to riff on it with. Well, see, in that, so, yeah, so th- th- this, this I think gets me to the thing. We're riffing and we're having fun, so all of that stress, all of that concern, that wasn't there for you. So that's when, you know, that's when some of the fun of it can come through. I guess. And I'd say, you know, you just, you know, don't worry too much. Like, you don't have to worry, like, what do you, if, if we're playing a game together, are you really gonna fucking worry that you're not pulling your weight with me? Um. Is that gonna actually, like, I, really? I guess not. There we go. That's what I did, what, but, um, I just don't really like doing it anyway. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing. Again, I play video games, you know, usually quite in a solitary way, but there are times when it's fun to play with other people. Right. Um. So, yeah, I wouldn't say you hate co-op. And I think because you have more of a narrative... Like, this is just me and my opinion. Are but you, I mean, are you, you have, telling me my own mind again? No, I'm pretty sure I do hate co-op. No, but I think, like, you approach... To me, you approach games with an interest more in their narrative. Like, hey, there's a cat. Yeah. That's just a regular cat. I never, didn't really quite figure out what this cat's deal was. <clears throat> I think it's just a cat. Yeah. It's, it's deal is cat. This I, is exactly what I thought he might be trying to out. lead me to something. Yeah. He was looking at that door. Uh, Oculus Rift. The future or crap? Foglo 13. I do actually think that, that represents a future for gaming. Why so? Because it's more immersive. I mean, all the uh, previous things that have been called the future of gaming, I'm thinking specifically motion controls here, those things are very specifically less immersive because it's swapping out a smaller action for a larger one. The small pressing of a button, which you hardly have to think about, has to be replaced with a much larger arm swing or other action. And that's like an extra step between brain and game. Can Whereas you... Oculus Rift is reducing this, the uh, space between brain and game. See, I'd argue that the larger, larger motion mirrors the game motion that that. Well, creates. that's the argument, but yeah. in in a realistic sense, the game often uh, doesn't read the motion properly, and every time it doesn't, that sort of kills your immersion instantly. Yeah, no, no, there's massive exit. I mean, the fact that Nintendo had to release it up, you know, a new piece of hardware about you know three quarters of the way through the Wii's life to make it actually do the fucking thing that it was. But even then, there's also a, a like a small reaction delay, which uh... Skyward Sword, I think worked for me it actually felt like i actually felt like i had a degree of and the other problem is that let's say take the skyward sword example that if you swing a sword in game the sword might bounce off something but in reality your arm's just gonna keep on going yeah that's the that's that's all those things together creates a fundamental separation between the real life motion and motion in the game i think it, it i think closer to immersion is a smaller steps between reaction and action within game like total brain imp- total brain immersion total uh, neural connectivity oh, is bad. the is the hypothetical zenith better than game, life video game control exactly yes would you trust your subconscious in better than life because i don't know if i would i mean no. I would, not, not that i wouldn't trust your subconscious i mean i wouldn't i don't know no, i'm life. a very neurotic man <laughs> You sure you can, like, just let go, become, like, Super Yahtzee or God Yahtzee or Super Saiyan Level 4 Yahtzee? Well, um, it's, it's all, always kind of unspecific how better than life works. Yeah, well, there's that as well. I mean, it just sort of takes your wildest fantasies and makes them come true. Yeah. I don't, I don't really... You could f- learn scary things about yourself. See, I don't way. really fantasize about torturing myself. No. Although I'd argue that I wouldn't think Arnold Rimmer did either. I mean, we're referencing Red Dwarf here. Mm. Well, I mean, that's the subconscious aspect of it, you know. Oh, that's there's the fucking cat again. Yep. just wants to be fed. There it is again. He wants to be fed on death. Why do you feel people constantly want games adapted to film? Hunter Hyena. I think that is a recognition thing. It's a, it's a fandom thing. It may, the question sort of makes me think of TV tropes. I mean, that's what happens if you have people in fandoms who are given uh, something like Wikipedia, but I said, hey, we don't care about whether something is really notable. If you're really into something... Then that's all that counts. That's all that counts. We're up there. And then the result is that people crowbar all their favorite things as tortuously into every single page as they can. It is a bit like that. I don't know. I haven't spent a lot of time on TV tropes, but the little time I've spent there has kind of reflected that kind of uh, and assessment. Uh, so to answer the question... I think people want games adapted to film because that's a recognition of something you're a fan of. 
Um, but when you're a fan of something, it becomes part of your identity. It's a recognition of your identity. Mm, I agree with an element of that. This is getting didactic again, isn't it? Stop saying didactic. I love the word. It's it's so useful. It's much better than waffling. I don't know. Waffling's kind of like I am bread. It's got a it's got a a funness to it. Well, there's certainly a baked goods theme going on there. Um. Okay, I'd say like. People will do that thing where they combine a game they love in their head in, in their head and a movie they love in their head, and in their head they combine it to just some nebulous... It's just good. It you, is just the ur of good. You can't see this, but he's making some very strange hand gestures there, listeners. Yeah. Well, just like he was jerking off brain. two people at once. <laughs> That's an interesting interpretation of... How would penises work like that? Are, just they, you, are so- they crescents? Does your <laughs> dick have a bend? I bet it does. I bet it tickles. No one's going to know what you're talking about because no one can see the gestures. Uh, they'll, well, they'll come to it. Anyway, we've reached the end of the video now. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed this experience into two games that have phones and aren't that scary. First um, one by first one actually does play with some interesting storytelling ideas. Yep. Uh, Second uh, one's just got a big fat pig. Yeah, and... Yeah. So, um... Oh, Yes. We almost we keep forgetting this, don't we? We need to pick your word. We're using a copy of Stormfront, the first book in the Dresden Files, by Jim Butcher. Stop. When you're ready. And stop. Father. Nice. There's a word. So now, mm. next week, Gabriel will have to come up with a game that centralizes the concept of fatherhood. Well, after I think after two weeks, I think we've scraped a few cobwebs off there. I did well on my grammar exam, so yeah. Nobody cares. Bye, everyone.